Hey guys, this is DJ from FTF. Today we are talking about monitors. We had a request from the viewer to go and give them a recommendation on a 1440, 144 hertz dedicated gaming monitor. So I scoured the internet, went through the most purchased and most highly reviewed budget uh, gaming monitors on Amazon. I'm gonna have some recommendations at the end of the video. First, we're just gonna talk briefly about the three different types of monitor technology, and then I'll go actually into the recommendations. Stick around, let's get it. Okay guys, so real quick, just to touch briefly on the three different monitor technologies, you have IPS, TN, and VA. TN is the oldest of the three types of monitor technologies. They have the fastest response time, but the worst color accuracy. That's that monitor back there. Uh, IPS has the highest color accuracy, but the slowest response time. That's why they're bad for gaming, great for content creation. I have that in the P65 uh, Creator from MSI. The Big Ben Q3501R back there is a VA panel and it is a good mixture between TN and IPS because it has good color accuracy and relatively decent uh, response time. This monitor has 100 hertz, so it's not the full 144, but as you guys who've been watching the channel for a while know, we don't just game on our equipment, so gaming isn't the top priority when I'm purchasing my equipment. I wanted to get something versatile that can be used for gaming and content creation. The extra screen real estate of a 35 inch monitor really gives me a lot of extra room to play with editing windows. And still 100 hertz response time, still relatively respectable. My games play great at 100 frames on uh, the um, AMD Ryzen 9 that I'm running on, on this uh, monitor now. And I'm, ultimately I'm really happy with the purchase there. We had a request from a viewer for a recommendation on a dedicated gaming monitor. So I'm going to go over all the options that I discovered and uh, would recommend that I found on Amazon. Okay guys, so like I said, I have all three different types of monitors sitting here in front of me. I want to show you what we're talking about when we're actually talking about color accuracy. This is the IPS display here. I want to point out the really uh, dark blues at the bottom of the logo, the really light blues at the top, how there's a nice gradient in between them. Now when I switch over to my TN, you see those light blues at the top of the first screen are way darker on the TN. So the color's not quite as accurate. This is more accurate towards what the design was originally when I made our logo. This is what it's gonna look like on a consumer screen. So that's why it's really important to have a secondary monitor that's of a lower quality than what you're actually making your content on so that you can review it. Now coming over to the VA display, you can see the color accuracy is still pretty good. It's much lighter at the top, especially when you compare it, and I'll get both of them in the same shot so you can see the VA and the TN. It's a lot more closer, uh, a lot more close, a lot closer, there you go, to the uh, original IPS display, and the TN is just way off from both. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about color accuracy. Now, aside from color accuracy, the next spec to consider when purchasing your next monitor is gonna be refresh rate and response time. So, we're gonna go to the IPS display first, and just to give you guys an example, I'm gonna grab this icon right here, and just moving it around the screen in between the blues and the whites of the logo, and you can see there is a fair amount of ghosting there. I'm sorry if the camera's not quite as steady as it needs to be, but I need to switch it between all the cams, all the monitors. So you see there is a fair amount of ghosting and there is a little bit of a trail in behind that icon as I'm moving it around. Okay, we'll come over to the TN display, which I'm currently recording on. I'm gonna grab this icon here, move it around. And you can see there's almost no motion blur to that. Whether I move it to the whites, to the blues, it's very smooth, very responsive. And there's no ghosting, no image behind it uh, as I move the icon across the screen. We'll come over to the VA display. And I will grab a, a same exact looking icon there, move it back and forth. So it does have a pretty good response time even on uh, the larger display. There's no ghosting on a dark background. It doesn't drag. You can't really see any uh, shade or any uh, tracers coming from behind it as I drag it across white. And it's still pretty smooth even though it's an average between the two. Okay, so back to it guys. I promise I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter. If you remember, my last two videos went over time by about, well, they went twice as long as I intended them to. So, 
I have the stuff pulled up on the Amazon here. As some of you might have already heard, we have the BenQ EX3501R. It's a ultra wide, 3440 by 1440 resolution, uh, 35 inch screen, 100 hertz refresh rate. So like I said, it's a happy medium. Because it is a VA panel, you get the best of both worlds. You get the refresh rate similar to a TN. You get the color accuracy similar to a similar to a IPS. It's the best of both worlds. The extra three inches, I got a 35 inch, so compared to a 32, that extra three inches really makes a big difference with the amount of screen real estate I had to play with with editing windows. That was the main reason why I chose to go this route. It's on sale right now, but as you know, this is during the quarantine. Prices have been fluctuating like crazy. I actually have an example to show you as it sits today that the price of one product is floating between $200 between uh, which retailer you buy it from. Now, the viewer who asked me for a direct recommendation is only going to be using his display for gaming purposes only. And he said specifically console for right now, although the plans of uh, me converting him to the PC Master Race is not out of the question. We'll leave that for only the future will tell. But as of right now, he uh, plays primarily console. He does have plans of getting the next gens when they get released. So I wanted to make sure he had 1440 uh, and at least 144 hertz. So on Amazon right now, Biotech GFT 27 dB, 27 inch WQHD gaming monitor with speakers. Not that that matters. You're going to be using headset anyway. It is 1440, 144 hertz, one millisecond response time because it's a TN type panel. As you guys have already heard a couple times in this video, TNs are the ones with the fast response times. It has free sync, so it will work with AMD processors, and it has G sync, so it will work with um, NVIDIA cards. It has three HDMI ports, which I think is awesome, and a display port, so that way you can hook it up to a PC if you ever decided to do that at uh, some point in time three-year warranty, uh, three-year limited warranty, basically covering uh, dead pixels. They have a, a broken pixel guarantee through Biotech. So some people are very brand specific and they want uh, a certain aesthetic to their studio. It's one of the reasons, if you remember watching our home studio tour, we picked the MSI P65 Creator laptop because it looks like a professional laptop and not very uh, black and red gamery, right? BenQ 35 monitor, much for the similar uh, same reasons. It has a chrome stand with a black frame around the monitor itself, and it looks very professional and not just super gamery, right? Now, uh, this monitor here, it is just a, a straight look matte black frame, and it has a couple downsides, okay? I don't have one of these to display for you guys personally, but I can tell you I've watched and read some of the reviews that have been written on Amazon and other web pages. I do my research very thoroughly. I'm not going to make a recommendation that I truly don't believe in. I would spend my own money on getting this laptop if I was in the same situation as the viewer who asked for this recommendation. Okay? The downfalls of this particular display is it has a bad stand. People don't like the stand to it. I don't care. That's not a priority for me. That's You're just sitting on it. At one point in time, I might just mount it and eliminate that downfall altogether. So there is a workaround to that downfall. It's up to your particular situation. Just wanted to make sure it gets translated in the video. Second downside is uh, the it has no RGB. So if you want RGB, get a Corsair. They have RGB everything. Okay. If you watched, once again, I've been sticking around the channel for a while and saw our Logitech G Pro X headset, you'd see I don't take RGB too seriously in consideration when I'm purchasing stuff for my for our studio here. So. I didn't matter to me much or the viewer whether this has RGB flashing all over his walls. The third downfall to the Biotech GFT 27DB is the on-screen display. That's a serious downfall because it is a little less user-friendly than other brands and, and that is something to consider. But at the same time, that's a minor downfall because considering it might take you a couple hours to go through your initial setup and find just the right settings for you. But once you find them, you are probably not going to have to touch the on-screen display almost ever again. So that even that downfall is kind of minimal to me. Would 100% recommend this laptop. Great value buy at 270 bucks on Amazon right now. Of course, price, prices fluctuate. Now, if you wanted to go a little bit higher, or if your purposes are more towards content creation and gaming, they do have an IPS display by Nixius, 27 inch. It's 1440, 144 hertz, the same thing there. But it's an IPS type display it doesn't have quite the same response time as what a TN is going to have, but you will get much, much better color accuracy through the IPS display. This one here from Nixius EDG27 is on sale for $325 right now on Amazon. 
like I said, prices fluctuate, but all of the links to all these products will be in the description below. And if you click on one of those links, number one, it's a way to support us without having to come directly out of pocket and go to our Patreon and maybe support us through our Patreon, which is set up now, by the way. So if you wanted to support us directly, you can. But if you use the Amazon affiliate links we have in the descriptions below, it's a way of you being able to contribute to the channel and say that you appreciate our content and appreciate the work that we do for you and they appreciate the recommendations we make without having to donate to us directly. So, uh, the Nixius EDG27 might not have the same response time as a TN panel, but if you're doing a mixture of things on it, the way we do here for the fam with content creation and gaming, I think this is also a really good buy right now at 325. We have, this is the example that I wanted to show you guys right now, because this video is being shot in the middle of the coronavirus COV ID thing. So, one monitor, the ViewSonic VX3258-2KC-MHD, 32 inch, it's a 1440-144, but look at the price variance here. You can buy it new for $362 plus $14 in shipping, also new for $451, free shipping, or new $656 plus $119.25 shipping, that says ZAR Systems Germany. Now. We're seeing a similar problem right now with webcams because everybody still wants to communicate but they're doing it electronically now. So almost all the webcams, like the good quality webcams, name brand webcams in North America are almost completely sold out everywhere. You can't find a Logitech C920 to save your life unless you're buying it used. All the retailers are out, Amazon is out, and we're sort of just sticking around waiting to see what they happen. But speaking about the C920 specifically, it was going for 50 bucks on sale, sometimes 70 bucks, 80 bucks when it was newer. It is still one of the most highly recommended streaming webcams that are be used out there. Now, because of the limited availability, those things have shot up like 250 bucks. So be very, very careful before you actually make your purchase. Make sure you're getting your research, you're getting it from a reliable retailer that you can get a hold of if there's a problem with the product when it actually gets shipped to your house. And careful follow up on it keep your warranty stuff register your products make sure you get uh, keep all your documentation so that way if you ever have to put in a warranty claim you have all the boxes you have the warranty paperwork and you have your products registered okay so that will be it for today guys i promise you i try to keep this video short we're a little over 12 minutes right now still a couple minutes longer than i wanted it to be but not so bad there were a few monitors i wanted to talk about but didn't have the time to i try to make these videos as informative as possible so that way it justifies the reasons we're making the decisions for our purchases and for the recommendations we're making for you guys. We pride ourselves in having completely unbiased and objective opinions that we can recommend to you, not because we're sponsored by a product and not because somebody's paying us to recommend a certain monitor or a certain mouse, a certain keyboard to you guys. We will always keep our objectivity. That is one of our promises. It's one of our foundations as Future Tech TV fam. We have started contacting, networking, and interviewing people to correspond. Uh, blah. We have also started advertising, interviewing, and uh, we've also started advertising, networking, and interviewing people who want to be correspondents with FTF. Uh, we are on the ropes right now with a, a gentleman who's going to be our League of Legends correspondent. I'm going to let him make his own introduction. Um, but we're really excited about working with him, and we're looking for people in other topics, other games to cover because, hey, you know, we got a couple of us so far. There's only so much reach that we can have, and we want to expand the network, expand the outreach. So if you're interested in that, contact us at futuretechtvfam at gmail.com. You can find us on all the social media at futuretechtvfam, Twitch, Twitter, TikTok. Speaking of Twitter, we hit 100 followers. It's one of our first milestones, so thank everybody who's been so supportive of this. We've This channel's only existed for about a month, and even though we're climbing up to 50 followers... Uh, 50 subscribers we had no goals set at all really when I started doing this I was doing it just out of passion because it's something I love it's something I enjoy doing so thank everybody for the immense amount of support we've received over this past month we're gonna keep doing this for you we'll show up for you every week you show up for us click that like subscribe and notification bell so that way when our next video gets uploaded you guys can find out about it right away and we hope once again that you've enjoyed spending your time here the same way I enjoy making this content for you guys, doing this research for you guys, and having fun making myself, the community, and my viewers stronger, smarter, and better. We'll see you next time.